Hello and welcome to today's Danielle Daily Show. I'm Danielle Watson. I really appreciate you guys joining me. I know some of us, even though Thanksgiving was only a week ago, it feels like we're was over a week ago, not only a week ago. Thanksgiving was over a week ago. A lot of us feel like we're still playing catch up. So I appreciate you taking the time to join me here or to watch this as the recording. It's so much more fun to do when I know that you guys are on the other end and you get to tell me about what's going on and with your day. Uh, I have a great topic today. We are talking about those of us who are our own toughest critic. I'm hoping I'm not the only one here who feels like they are their own toughest critic. I have today's note to self for you and I'd love to hear, you know, what's what's going on in your day. So where I am here in Northern Virginia, it's raining outside, but it's almost 70 degrees. So I'm taking advantage of that. Even though I'm sitting by the fire, I'm running around in a tank top. It's awesome. I It's probably the last time I will get to wear this until sometime next May. So that's my, my big excitement in my, in my day today. It looks like Julio has joined joined us. Amy's here. Amy says, I'm so sorry. I haven't been here forever. I love, love, love your stuff. Well, thank you, Amy. I love hearing that. I love it when you guys let me know how much you love the show. And I love it when you join me here live. But even if you don't watch it until later, that's great. I so appreciate each and every one of you who has shared the show. It is so exciting when I receive comments or even a private message from somebody that I've never met, but is a friend of one of yours and I'm telling you without you guys this this show would not be going very far I, I have a limited number of friends on Facebook but each of you have friends and when you share the broadcast it just sends waves of positivity out into the world and I just so 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 appreciate you guys for for doing that so I know some of us are extremely familiar with Facebook live and some of us a little bit less so but there should be a little box down in the lower left hand corner that you can click to share or after the broadcast is over when this is just a recording if you just go to my page you'll see you'll see the recording of the video and you can just share it on your page the way you share any kind of inspirational quote or other other things that you like to share so who here it looks like so far we have Julio Amy Amber and Elena welcome Amber and Elena it's good to see you too who here feels like you are your own toughest critic I know for me I hands down I am my own toughest critic and I wanted to talk a little bit about that critic's eye and how it can really serve us and how a lot of times we just haven't trained ourselves to use it in a way that's actually really healthy and productive and I'll give you today's note to self I'm hoping that you're going to start thinking about that inner critic or that critic's eye that you have in a different way by the time that we wrap up the broadcast today so let me know if you like me and you feel like there's nothing anybody could say to you that would be worse than what you've already thought about saying to yourself. I really hope I'm not the only one. I, I don't think I've ever had anybody say anything to me that's as mean as what I could come up with as far as what's wrong with something I have done or what's wrong with something I've created. I find that I can spot the hole in anything and I can figure out where something went wrong or it isn't good enough. And I've learned through my life how to actually shift that around. That's, that's a very well-developed muscle in me, that, that critic. But I have figured out a way to actually use it so that it's actually very productive and healthy and helps me move forward rather than as something that I use to tear myself down and limit myself and tell myself how I, I'm not any good. So Elena says, absolutely 100% on the same page. I love that. Okay, I'm not alone. Thank you. Thank you. There are two of us at least. Amber says, for sure. I even find it difficult to accept praise from others uh, sometimes because I am so critical of myself. I find this more so in the case of business versus personal. It isn't that I never like what, um, let's see. It isn't that I never like what I do, but I, oh, I'm always looking to improve. Yeah, so Amber has already called out one of, one of the gifts of being a critic, especially a critic of oneself, is that you're always looking to improve. And that's a wonderful thing. It means you're always looking to grow. You're always looking to expand. You're always looking to experience more and be more and do more. So I love that she brought that up. It looks like Tracy's watching. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. So again, if you've just joined 
joined us. I'm Danielle Watson. This is the Danielle Daily. On the Danielle Daily, I promise you will always find something inspiring, fun, or positive. No matter what the topic is, I'm always going to come at it from a positive bent, something that will inspire you to think about things in a different way, maybe to soften your, your view of yourself or of the world, or just a different point of view that will help you feel more empowered and so that you're not feeling like you're swimming around in a world where you know things are just, they're out of your control. There are certain things that are out of our control, but there's always a point at which we have the power to do something. And I, I always want to bring your attention to that. So let's talk a little bit more about being our own toughest critic. So for me, I, there are not that many people who believe me when I tell them this, but if you've known me a long time, if you're a member of my family or you've known me a long time, you know that I have a very well developed critic's eye. And when I was younger, I was a huge pessimist that I could find what was wrong with everything. The glass was half empty if, if there was anything in the glass at all. Uh, I could find why something wasn't perfect, what could have been better, how something should have been different. And it was a downer for everybody around me. It was a downer for everybody in my life. It was a downer for me. It meant that I never got to really fully enjoy anything because I could always find what could have been better, what should have been more, what should have been different about any situation. And it was extremely disempowering, but at the same time, I felt like if I wasn't pointing out what was wrong with something, then I might settle or somebody else might settle or something might get, um, get slipped by that, that shouldn't. That it was my responsibility to point out what was wrong with something. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that that's really not helpful. It doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't make anyone else feel good. There's nothing wrong with offering your observations when people have asked for them, but sometimes they have not asked for them. And I found a way to actually use this very highly developed skill of being a tough critic in a different way. I've actually flipped it around so that it actually serves me. It makes people around me feel so loved and so wonderful and it makes me feel good about myself. It looks like uh, Julio says, I don't want to start a gender thing here, but is this more prevalent among women than men? I feel like I would benefit from a little more inner critic, but I hear the women around me being way more critical of themselves than I've ever been. So this is a great question. I feel like, Julio, we've run into this a couple of times, and I love that you bring it up, how it seems like women are more one thing or more the other thing. And honestly, I don't know if it's a gender thing or if it's just an experiential thing. If it's if it actually has to do with men and women being wired differently, or if it's just that we're emulating the people who have been in our environment who behave a certain way. Or, I've brought this up before, if it's basically a sample bias where maybe there are a lot of men who are critical of themselves but they don't speak it out loud and because us ladies tend to be more more verbal about our criticisms that we tend to hear those criticisms more from women. So I, I think it's interesting and I love that you contributed that you feel like that that's not your personal experience and I, I would be willing to make a sweeping generalization that, that men are just less critical of themselves. I, I have nothing to back that up, but I, I would go along with that idea that men are probably less critical of themselves. But why women are less critical of themselves, if it's because they're women or it's just because what we've seen other women do or if it's because of the media or whoever, however that happened, I, I couldn't say. Elena says, I was just thinking this. It drives my husband insane. Love that. And, and Julio says, good point. Yeah, so there's, we could really, really think about this and, and explore why. I think it's a really interesting question. And I think that when we think about it in the, in the terms of being our own, our own toughest critic, I would venture to say that men and women are critical in different ways. Um, that we have different parts of ourselves that we examine and find wanting or maybe find that they aren't the way that we'd like them to be and I don't know. So 
I love that. Thank you for bringing it up. I'd love to hear other viewer comments on that, whether you're watching live on the broadcast or whether you watch later. You know, what is your experience? Do you think women are more critical of themselves than men are? If you're a, a man, do you feel like that's, that's your experience or that it's not true? So here's what I did with my critic's eye. And this took a long time. <laughs> It took dedicated practice and I still have to work at it sometimes. I I love that you guys think that I am just so loving and sunshine and roses all the time and that everything is wonderful in Danielle land and that she never sees anything wrong with anything. I love that you guys have that impression of me, but if you could be inside my head, you would know that that is not true and that I actually have to work pretty hard and focus diligently on finding the good in things and people. And at this point in my life, yes, it has become a much more natural practice of mine to just see the good, but that is a skill I've developed. It was not natural to me. It still sometimes feels like a fight, especially when things are not going my way. So here's what I did. Born with a critic's eye, I believe. I believe some of us are just born with that critic's eye. We see what is wrong with everything. But here's where I took my power back with that. And here's where I hope you'll start thinking about this in a new way. Instead of thinking of yourself as, you know, I'm just somebody who's really critical of myself and others. I want you to just change your focus along with me on this and start using that critic's eye in a new way. So I used to look for what's wrong with this, where's the hole in this, what, what should be different about this. And instead I took that same ability to focus and I just decided that instead of looking for what was wrong, what needed to be different, where's the hole, I started focusing, like relentlessly focusing on what was right about something. What was right about something, what was beautiful about something, what was perfect about something, what was interesting about something, what was going well, what was working, what was going right. I just took that same ability to focus that I used to use to find what was wrong with something or what was wrong with me and what I was doing, and I started using it to focus on what was good and what was right and what was working and what was going well. and. It was a lot easier, I think, than developing a whole new skill set, even though I still have to work at it, because it was an ability I already had. It was that fo the ability to focus was something I already had, and I think any any of us who feels like we are our own toughest critic already has that ability to focus in on the little nuances and details of something, and instead of focusing on the flaws. We focus on the strengths, we focus on the beauty, we focus on what's, what's great about things. So uh, here's, here's a wonderful you know, example from my life. So I know that when I was younger, when I would meet people, I would try to figure out what their malfunction was, <laughs> like what was wrong with them, why, why they were just not completely okay. I'm really sharing like something that is ugly about me. So when I was younger, very much always trying to find what was what was wrong with somebody else so that I could feel better about myself or I could feel superior or you know whatever whatever the reason was. And as I've become older and I've developed the skill of using that critic's eye to find what's right about somebody, instead of looking for how somebody is wrong or flawed or messed up or they have something weird about them that I don't like, I immediately start looking for why is this person interesting? Why is this person lovable? Why is this person amazing? What is this person doing that I just think is really cool? And at this point, since I've, I've been at this for probably, oh gosh, probably working on it for about 15 to 20 years, I mean much more in the last 10 years, but definitely it's been on my mind for a good 15 to 20 years. But at this point in my life, when I meet somebody new, the first thing I do is I automatically, without even having to think about it, I notice something about them that I like. And almost 99% of the time, I verbalize that. And it's so interesting because when I meet somebody new, one of their first responses is, 
You made me feel so good about myself, and I love that. But it took work for me to become the kind of person who makes people feel that way about themselves. And it also took me being able to look at myself in a different way and not needing to find myself to be superior to other people or be or need to see other people as less than me or somehow flawed in order for me to feel feel good about myself. So does that resonate with anybody? Does anybody having that experience where you feel like you you definitely are sort of like looking for how that person is weird or are you are you more in the place where I'm at now where when you meet somebody you're looking for what's amazing about them what's interesting about them what's beautiful about them what you like about them what you have in common how you can connect I'm I'm curious you know do you have that experience too is that something you're working on where, where are you using your critic's eye in life and how are you using it? It's, it's a very powerful, well-developed skill that you have. If you find that you are your own toughest critic, you are very, very well-versed at figuring out the little kind of details of things that, that don't fit. But what if instead of looking at the details that don't fit that are weird or negative or things that make something less than? What if you notice the little details that make something amazing or interesting or beautiful or different? What do you think about that? Let me know. In just a second, I will give you today's note to self. Uh, the lighting is really going down because there's a storm coming through. So I, I apologize if it looks like I'm in the dark. I rely on natural light for these broadcasts and I can tell it looks like I'm, I'm sitting in the dark now. I'm not, uh, the, the window is open, but there's definitely cloud cover coming through. So. Let me know, what do you think about that? Are you, are you feeling like, okay, my critic's eye is a good thing, it's something I, I'm thinking about using in a new way, I don't need to be so hard on myself, I don't need to be so hard on other people, it's, it's not productive, it's not helpful for me, it's not helpful for them. Do you find that you're the kind of person who you know, offers constructive criticism to people that haven't asked. I know I very much used to be that way and I've had to train myself that, you know, unless somebody asks for my feedback, I, I don't need to give it, <laughs> especially if it's, not, if it's not helpful. So yeah, let me know. Amber has shared the video. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it when you guys share these videos. It, it just makes me feel so good. It makes me feel like you're getting value out of this and it's, you feel like what we're talking about is something that people in your life really need to hear. So I definitely appreciate that. I'm going to give you the note to self in just a sec. But again, I'm Danielle Watson. This is the Danielle Daily. We talk about all kinds of things here. But what I always promise you is that you will find something positive, something fun or something inspiring. So I hope that today's topic is something that inspires you to think about yourself and your abilities in a different way, especially, you know, a critic's, critic's eye isn't necessarily something that we see in a positive way, but if we just turn the way that we use it, it's a strength that we've already had inside of us and that's very well developed and that we can use to do good, to make ourselves feel better about ourselves, to make other fe people feel better about themselves. Amber says, I don't have a problem offering feedback to strangers or at work, but I do seem to have a problem with my family, husband, children, and it's not always welcome. Yeah, so isn't it interesting how in different areas of life we, we will behave in different ways? And I, I, would, I would say, you know, that's something to really reflect back on and ask ourselves, why? Are, are we feeling a different way about ourselves in those different situations? Are we having different expectations of people? Think, really think about why we show up differently in different areas of life. And it doesn't mean that we have to show up the same way in every area of life, but it's interesting to contemplate why we do that and to think about what that means for ourselves. Because Usually the way that we're behaving has very little to do with other people and everything to do with us. It looks like Mark has joined us. Thank you so much. All right, so today's note to self. Are you ready to write it down? Do you have your pen and paper? Are you ready to put this on a sticky note or somewhere 
where you can keep it so that the next time you're kind of bumping through your house, this might come up and it might be the exact inspiring words that you need to read that day. Well, here it is. Okay, so today's note to self says, Dear self, say nice things to yourself even if you're not sure you deserve it. So I love this note to self because I know for me, saying nice things to myself has, has been a journey. It has been a challenge. I am most certainly my own toughest critic and I've really had to train myself to say nice things to myself even when everything in my life isn't going perfectly, even when I'm not doing all the things that I feel it is I want to do or be or have or achieve. That if I want to become a person who has done all of those things and is being all the wonderful things that I want to be, if I want to do that, one of the best ways that I can support myself in getting to be that person is to just say nice things to myself, to encourage myself, let myself know I'm doing well. And when I do that, when I feel really good about myself, when I'm speaking kindly to myself, when I'm speaking positive, encouraging words to myself, it gives me so much fuel and energy for giving that to other people and it makes it much more effortless. So that is why I wrote today's note to self. I hope that you find that helpful and that you'll think about speaking more more nice things to yourself. Let me read the note to self again in case you're writing it down. It says, Dear self, say nice things to yourself even if you're not sure you deserve it. And usually I sign it, love me. So don't wait until you're perfect to say nice things to yourself. Don't wait until there's nothing left for you to criticize about yourself to say nice things to yourself. Start saying nice things to yourself now so that you can say nice things to others, so that you feel good about yourself, so that you are one more person in the world who sees the positive in the world around you and in yourself. And it's so fascinating how as you start to speak more kindly to yourself and say nice things to yourself, other people can sense that. Even you, I'm not saying you have to say these things out loud. You can say them in your mind or in your journal or however you want to say them, but you will begin to radiate an energy that has people just saying nice things to you and it feels so good because they'll be saying those nice things to you because you make them feel good about themselves and I don't know about you but I love the feeling of being somebody who makes other people feel good about themselves that that fills my heart up it makes me so happy to be somebody who helps other people feel good about themselves not because I'm out there running around looking for people to help who don't feel good about themselves but because I take the time to speak nice words to myself to treat myself well and that in turn just kind of it it gives off a vibe that I, I'm a happy person that I'm a loving person and that makes other people feel loved and accepted by me and I love that it makes me feel so good so one last time the note to self it looks like Tim has joined us thank you so much love seeing your name pop up so last time the note to self for today says dear self Say nice things to yourself, even if you're not sure you deserve it. So again, don't wait until you're perfect to say nice things to yourself. Start building yourself up now. Start using that critic's eye, that very tough critic's eye that you often turn on yourself. Start using it to, to suss out all the things that are wonderful and unique and beautiful about yourself and start, start talking to yourself about how wonderful you are right now, okay? Don't wait. All right, that was today's Danielle Daily. I'm Danielle Watson. I will be back here again tomorrow. Remember, you can message me anytime if there's something you'd like me to talk about, if there's something you're grappling with and you'd like an, you know, an outside-the-box perspective, feel free to message me. Feel free to leave it in the comments here, even if it's when the broadcast is in, in recording. Um, I always read those comments. I so appreciate you guys. I love you so much. Thank you so much for sharing this show with your friends. Thank you so much for contributing your wisdom. As I say so often, 
Your comments are so much more valuable than anything I have to say. I just want to be here providing a platform and facilitating a place where all of us positive minded people can come together and, and just bring more awesome positivity to the Facebook feeds around the world. So again, thank you for sharing the show. Thank you for being here. I'll be back tomorrow. I love you guys. See you then. Okay. Bye. Mwah.